Uh, my name is Andrew Chapman. I'm the current clinic coordinator for the music therapy clinic here at U of L. Um, and it's so good to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and I guess we'll just kick it off. I'll go ahead and share my screen. So I'll talk a little bit at you today, um, but I'm really excited to kind of mess around and just show you some, so you, uh, show you some things live um, and let you kind of experiment as well. Uh, we've got um, a fun thing to do later too. Um, but I wanted to kind of take you through a couple different um, considerations and just information when you're thinking about MIDI. Um, first of all, I wanted to kind of also um, cover some of the history of MIDI, uh, why this technology was developed first, um, who developed it, and why that even matters, right? Um, it seems like that might not matter as much, but I think it helps and it has helped me in the past um, when I'm thinking about <coughs> why exactly um, I'm using MIDI, um, what exactly we're trying to accomplish, right? What was the original function of it um, and how are we utilizing that function now? Um, both for fun and for our practices and, and things like that too. Um, so that's me. And then you've met Chris already. Um, he's going to jump in a couple times and uh, show us some fun MIDI things later about the jam stick, uh, which is a MIDI guitar and also some live applications um, and some MIDI functions that are not as closely related to what's just originally accessible and, and easily accessible to. Um, so yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit about why it was first developed. Um, and then we're going to go through some equipment and tech. Um, and then I wanted to really talk about, um, how this technology can allow for really accessible music making, um, through a lot of different sounds and a lot of really approachable things too, that aren't even related to MIDI keyboards or even playing instruments at all. Um, and then we'll also talk about what are some general applications for your therapy practice. So the best way that I've ever heard MIDI described that really clicked for me, um, first of all, um, the, um, acronym meaning musical instrument digital interface, um, which is kind of a long way to say, um, it's a language that triggers um, sounds on digital instruments. Um, so not a sound itself, but basically an electrical computer signal uh, that controls sounds. Uh, the first basic concept from MIDI, uh, you could even say was um, like a music box, or if you've ever seen a player piano, those that basic concept is kind of what drives the concept of MIDI. Um, in the sense that I'm using something non-musical to control something musical, right? Um, like a strip on a player piano is exactly like a, a MIDI interface, um, which you'll see later as well um, on GarageBand and things like that. It might look familiar to you. So that was the first sort of conception of how do I make music and control music with something non-musical or something that's not of the original thing, right? Um, in the 80s, uh, Dave Smith of Profit Synths, you may have heard of Profit Synths. Um, those were, and still are, a really popular brand of synthesizer um, that have really endured uh, through many years. Um, and he was one of the innovators of what is now called MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Um, and that was originally uh, conceived so that people could use one synthesizer to control sounds on a different or samples and things like that. Um, sorry, my mic uh, is being funny. Uh, but that is sort of the uh, initial inter invention of this um, is how do I allow these two synthesizers to talk to each other? Um, it could be each one controls the other, and it was also two-way, so it still is two-way as well, um, in the sense that one controller can talk to the other and control sounds on each one, right? Um, from that moment, 
it was honestly very impressive because there weren't a lot of alterations or controls, um, differences to the MIDI software. Um, honestly, it stayed relatively the same um, until 2020. Um, there wasn't really a need for an innovation because it was just how it is. Um, it kind of is baffling to me that something that advanced, something that we use every, use every day now was invented and not really changed in the, in the 80s. Um, but that's also just because I'm a youngster and I, I don't really know the 80s. But um, <laughs> my, uh, um, when I was researching this, um, I had no clue, but MIDI 2.0 actually was um, innovated recently, which honestly, not that much uh, has changed. Um, it's backwards compatible with other MIDI things. So, you know, honestly, it's not even noticeable, um, but generally it's an it's improved kind of latency and accuracy, um, as well as just adapted to some of the um, computers, to some of the MIDI controllers that are being um, innovated as well to kind of match that. And the last thing here is things that are happening now are, you might hear about WIDI, which is a wireless uh, interface. So you don't need a cord at all. It just looks like a MIDI cable um, <laughs> that attaches to a synthesizer. Um, and you can, attach it to a computer um, and that's that. Um, so that those are crazy things that are happening right now, but this is generally kind of the timeline. Um, I wanna get hop into what do you need to start working with MIDI? Um, basically, um, I've got a few, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier um, when we're connecting two synthesizers. This I have never personally done. Um, there's not really a giant need to use this unless you're in a performance or something like that. Um, and you want one of your keyboards or one of your MIDI controllers to control something that is not directly in front of you or maybe um, is harder to reach or something like that. Um, this MIDI, this pin, five pin MIDI controller looks a lot like this. You may have seen these around. Um, this is not as common, I would say. Um, I often use USB, but this is the very first MIDI cable that was uh, um, dreamt of was this five pin MIDI. And it connects to the other synthesizer uh, with the same five pin. So this would be multi-directional in the sense that um, this keyboard could control this keyboard and vice versa. <laughs> this is the most common MIDI uh, setup that I use almost every day um, for various things. Um, you've, I'm sure, have seen this sort of cable. Um, other things that it's commonly used for are like printers. Um, it's a USB uh, 2.0 or USB B uh, cable. Um, that one end looks like this boxy end and the other one looks more like in uh, a typical USB connection. <laughs> typically how this will work, this is just a one way MIDI connection. So typically how this will work is a MIDI controller like the one I have here or this picture in Akai, um, which actually does not make any sound on its own. It doesn't have any onboard speakers or anything like that. Although some Akai's do, some MIDI controllers do. Um, but this is, um, not, this is only one way, right? So you can use this controller to control sounds on your laptop computer. Um, whatever is housing this DAW like garage band or logic or soundtrap or what have you. Um, so I would say this is the most common that I use. Um, you might find other cables that look different. For instance, um, the Jamstick, which we'll demo later, um, has a very specific cable that it uses um, to uh, attach via USB. Um, but often this uh, is typically what you'll find when you're looking at MIDI connections. Um, other things that um, you wanna consider when you're setting up MIDI. So you want to consider what 
DAW and VSTs you're using. Um, so for a lot of people, this is GarageBand. Um, this is probably the easiest like ground level besides maybe Soundtrap or other things like Band Labs that you may have heard of. Uh, this is probably the most approachable one for you to uh, first mess around with if you're just kind of um, entering the field on these. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what this looks like. Um, let me stop sharing for a second and I'll reshare. When you get a chance, Andrew, can you make me a co-host? Yeah, I'll do that immediately. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't been able to look at the chat, but it looks like there's some awesome gear conversations going. Um, cool. Uh, we are using, so I'll show you briefly what I'm using right now, um, which is a Donner Starry key. It's just a, it's just this big. Um, I often carry it around in my backpack. Um, it's like extremely compact and great for what we do at the clinic, which is a lot of offsite traveling to different things. Um, we have a full review of it too on our website. Um, so if you, uh, we can leave some links to that as well. Um, but we reviewed, um, the Donner Starry key, which is a keyboard and also a drum set an electronic drum set from Donner, um, which is also can control MIDI as well. Um, so that's really cool. And you can check out all that out and price points and all that kind of stuff. Um, and specifics about those on our website. Um, but. I've got it connected uh, with a USB MIDI cable to just to my regular GarageBand app. Everybody hear that okay? Uh, so, cool. All right. So, <laughs> I'm currently controlling a VST called BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, that, uh, I'll show you now as well. Let me just share. There we go. So this is what it looks like. Um, a lot of VSTs will come with different, um, actual pop-ups that you can control as well, um, <coughs> that are linked to GarageBand, but you can see. This is probably one of the best VSTs I've sound for orchestra sounds. Um, you can control expression and things like that as well. Tremolo strings. Um, and then other instruments as well. Um, like these are probably my favorite. Um, and then also you can use just any of the preloaded VSTs. So I had downloaded that um, and added it to GarageBand. Um, but you can also use any of the preloaded VSTs on GarageBand, which are located here on the side. <laughs> so a lot of the synthesizers are not too bad. One thing to note, go back one step, Andrew, in the folder. So, uh, see that little download button that yeah. just means that there are sounds available that you haven't downloaded. Um, uh, but they do take up a lot of disk space on a computer. Right. So there is a lot of extra sounds, but it might be good if you have an external hard drive or if you're considering getting one, mm -hmm. like uh, anyone with like USB 3 or higher would be fast enough to use and store sounds on and things like that. So, yeah, especially if you want to expand beyond what is here and download a lot of different things. That's always a good option. Um, 
personally, um, I use a MacBook Air, which we were talking about earlier, is not even that like uh, probably one of the lower tiers of uh, you know um, like space and um, processing power that you could find. Um, and this simple setup has never caused me. It's very easy to plug and play. Um, so especially even with like the Donner and other MIDI controllers like it, um, there's no, almost no setup required. It's really plugging it in. Um, and then it immediately, immediately registers on GarageBand. So you can use it with very minimal setup. Um, other things that are great are drum kits, which <laughs> so sometimes it'll, um, if you've edited a patch, then it will want you to create a new, there we go. So I can use both, um, the keys. as well as the drum pads as well. So it's always good to me. To get a um, MIDI controller that allows for drum pads a lot of times because those are also even simpler to use if you're looking at drum patches and things like that. Um, so that's shortly kind of what it looks like in GarageBand. It'll look a little different, obviously, in whichever one, um, whichever um, <laughs> DAW that you're working with. Um, but this is very typically what I will use, um, mainly because um, it, number one, doesn't take up a lot of space. Like I was saying, there's not a lot of processing power involved in GarageBand, um, and it is free on Macs and things like that. It's easy to use. Um, if you're not on a Mac, um, I always think Soundtrap is a great option and we'll play around with that a little bit later too. Um, but let's, let's go on a little bit. So in preparation for this, um, one of the things that I really wanted to show you all is our MIDI applications that <coughs> are even beyond, um, what, I mean, not even beyond, even more simple and accessible than what you can do with a MIDI controller um, and a DAW like GarageBand. Um, there are often things that clients are already using in their everyday life that you can use to make music that are powered by MIDI and that MIDI makes possible. Um, so one thing I wanted to say really is that um, MIDI is typically minimal cost, even MIDI controllers and cables often that expensive um, as opposed to uh, more like guitars like electric guitars and things like that um, and they would still allow you to create electric guitar sounds but really just on a midi device right <laughs> um, so minimal cost maximum possibility though right so um, for a small amount of things you can get a large amount of possibilities um, that you can use um, infinity, right? There are like probably like a, so many downloadable VSTs, but also you saw just on GarageBand how many possibilities there are um, that clients can use that you can use as well. Um, <coughs> often MIDI and the technology was created so that it would be uh, inexpensive to install on keyboards and guitars and whatever. Um, so, um, a lot of times even keyboards that clients are using that maybe they've had for a long time, old keyboards, um, still have a MIDI out that all you would need is maybe your computer and a DAW and a, um, a cable and their keyboard is already capable of doing this. One of the, my favorite things about that is that 
that puts a lot of resource in the client's hands as well um, to say you're already using this really accessible thing um, let me just teach you how to do this right um, and they come away with more knowledge than they had um, so uh, that's one of my favorite things about it as well is that really often very accessible um, and I'll show you a little bit about that too so flashing back up to here even if you don't have a MIDI controller um, you can often musically type. This is kind of a screenshot from GarageBand um, that I will also, I can just show you very fast as well. Um, you've probably seen this as well if you haven't um, had, like if you don't have a MIDI cable connected um, and you choose a MIDI controller in GarageBand uh, or a VST, then this will often pop up automatically but up here in window, the window tab, um, show musical typing. If you click that, I don't know if you can see the musical typing. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. And it's okay. command K on, on, um, right. A Mac. So, and on the iPad, it's often, uh, you know, you're often given the right keyboard view right away. So this is obviously a little bit different on like GarageBand, the app. Right. Uh, but GarageBand, the app, system. yeah. Though that has instruments just preloaded anyways and often instrument interfaces that are, you can interact with. Like I'm sure you, if you've used the on, the on the iPad, you've seen the guitar interface that allows you to actually just strum strings or the drums that you can press drums. Similar idea. Um, but even if you don't have a controller, this is always a great option. If I'm with a client and I just didn't bring a MIDI controller that day and they're like, oh, can we just add that one thing here? Um, this is always a great option uh, to just pull up. And honestly, if you play a keyboard, it doesn't take that much. Um, like, It's or, clunky, but you can get used clunky. to it. Yeah, you can get used to it. I'm honestly surprised that sometimes how just like instinctively, you know, like just playing piano, my fingers will just like, uh, you know, play a chord. And that's using, as you can see on the screen, it's A S D F. So it's your, your actual wordy keyboard, like your typing keyboard. Yeah. And there are also controls for octaves as well. So, um, this is limited and again, kind of clunky. Um, but, So still quite a bit of um, possibilities just with a QWERTY keyboard. Um, other things that you can just use your QWERTY keyboard for. Um, I'm going to pull up a few websites um, that I've just been having a lot of fun with recently, honestly. Um, but this has been one of my favorites. Um, jazz keys. So there we go. This uh, program uses MIDI technology to incorporate just words that you've typed um, into a jazz improvisation. Um, and honestly, it does not sound that bad. Um, it kind of depends. This is a very niche thing that would kind of depend on client preferences and things like that. But honestly, it just kind of, I've been having fun with it and it helps you get into the mindset of um, what can I even create just with the QWERTY keyboard right in front of me, right? So. And then you can play it back. So honestly, really fun. Um, other things that are like this um, are also, let's see if I have it saved. 
there are some more ambient things as well that are possible like yeah type of tone is great um it can create um more sort of um, not very specifically jazz but more ambient music with um, just letters that you type And then this one where it really shines is playing things back. So you can change the type of music as well. This is a more sort of ambient interpretation. Or if you're into hyper pop. <laughs> So those are all, albeit neat options uh, and kind of quirky, um, but this is just basically to demonstrate there are so many tools for you to be able to use just what you have in front of you um, using MIDI technology. Um, let's see. Other applications that I've found really helpful, um, I use Dot Piano often, um, which creates a really interesting visual element as well. Um, if you have clients who are especially drawn to uh, visual stimuli and things like that, um, this allows, so I'll use my MIDI keyboard for this, but you can also use um, just your regular QWERT, QWERTY keyboard as well. Doesn't want to participate. I know. There you go. So GarageBand is still interesting thing. I did this on accident, but GarageBand is still, um, you know, uh, assigned to horns while I'm doing the dot piano. Cool. Yeah. We can't hear anything from the dot piano image. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm not hearing anything either, which is just odd, but it may having be having some latency issues through zoom and things like that. Yeah. Um, but so those are all just websites, uh, that are really open source, uh, free. Um, that's a cool thing too, is that music nerds are always looking for, you know, random projects and things to do. So, there's no shortage of um, keyboards that you can access online, synths that you can access online that you can um, control with MIDI as well. Um, and you can see a few just general applications that I've listed here as well. Um, if you, I'm sure that I also don't want to like say, um, this is basically just what I've done uh, with MIDI in the past. I've used it in relaxation tracks, um, creating songwriting tracks, had a really fun instance recently where uh, there was someone in oncology treatment, um, an adult who was really interested in relaxation and had been having a lot of trouble sleeping, um, but also had played piano a long time ago and really wanted to re reestablish their connection with piano playing. Um, and so I said, hey, why don't we bring this MIDI controller in um, and we could even make a relaxation track ourselves, right? So I kind of talked her through the process of, well, what sounds would be best for a relaxation track? What do you specifically want? Um, and we collaborated together. She played a couple of tracks um, and I played a few as well, <laughs> but she was able to take this looped uh, relaxation track home, 
um, that we created just in the moment because I had a MIDI controller there. Um, and she came back the next time and said, you know, I've listened to this every night and I can sleep through the night. Um, this is incredible. And I also feel such ownership over it, right? Because I was able to make it my own and choose sounds and play them myself. Um, so uh, a few things that, yeah, similar to that songwriting is great too. Um, I, I have had several experiences where, um, clients have been able to, they don't play violin, but they really want strings in their song. Right. Um, so they've been able to play and they play keyboards. So they play the strings in them themselves. Um, and that was a really impactful experience to them as well. Um, so I, I really think it allows for a lot of possibility. Um, and even more than this, um, but these are just some of the immediate things that you could choose to do. Um, I'll go ahead and let Chris talk a little bit about the jam stick, which is actually a MIDI guitar, um, and then also some other MIDI applications and things like that. Um, yeah. Cool. Hey, y'all feel free to, to chime in if you've got questions about anything yes. or like, what could be helpful specifically to your practice and stuff. I want to show you probably the coolest piece of equipment I have got in a long time. So this is the jam stick. And the cool thing is it is a MIDI controller. I am a guitar player before I played any other, other than trumpet. Guitar was my second instrument. So um, for me, Playing a MIDI controller always meant playing the piano, which I got okay at, like I can do it, but guitar is is my thing. So this is a headstockless, there's no headstock. You tune it down here with little, there's like a little fine tuner thing. And then uh, it picks up messages and turns it, it can control just like a keyboard is a MIDI controller. This can be a MIDI controller. So I can play all kinds of synths with a guitar, which means I can play chords, I can do finger picking patterns, I can use a slide. The other cool thing about this, so it's $799, which a medium quality electric guitar is usually plus $500. So this, it's not just a MIDI controller, it is also a regular electric guitar. Uh, and they both can be used at the same time. You could be sending MIDI and electric guitar at the same time. So um, as a guitar player, I'll show you what the first thing I played. So the jam stick comes with its own um, software. Oh, I don't want to leave the meeting. I want to share my screen. All right, you all can see this. So tell, thumbs up if you can hear it. So I... I, can, I get to play Van Halen now. I get to play. Or, it's Halloween, so who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Uh, I can play the synth, and then as you can see here, there's uh, keys, so I, could, I can play piano. Here's a electric piano, dreamy electric piano. This is their own plugin that comes. All kinds of sounds. I could turn it into a bass. Uh, let's do this one. So for me, this has totally changed my life. Uh, let's see, here's a percussion. Let's go. 
Eigen. I can turn it into a drum, I can turn it into whatever. So for me, the fact that this is an electric guitar and it is a uh, it is a an acoustic guitar or and a MIDI controller and it weighs uh, five pounds or something. It's small so, and it, so it's like three quarter size. So any of the people that play like those baby tailors and stuff like this, it's comfortable, but it doesn't feel like a toy. And the other thing is like Jamstick's been really cool. Um, they have a discount code that you all can use if you interested yeah all we need is a drummer uh but people who only need a beat uh so they have a discount code amta25 for 25 percent off if you're interested that they told us we could share so it brings it down to about 600 bucks uh i know that's still a lot of money in music therapy world but i'm saying if you're planning ahead and you've got next year's budget or things like that uh, the only downside really is with all of this stuff is you have to get a little bit good at troubleshooting. Uh, occasionally things are clunky and don't work right. And the jam stick inherently is something that, that is translating a string pitch bending information and things like that and sliding between notes, you know, things that a piano doesn't do. And a computer, even when it's fine tuned, still likes to freak out when you do certain things. Um, so if you do get one, you can please reach out to me. I'm happy to like help you with whatever. Um, they're also really great. I've had issues and I was like, Hey, this isn't working. Boom. They got back to me and we got it fixed. The last thing I wanted to show, um, was how to use like advanced functions of a MIDI controller. All right. Where is main stage here? Uh, file open recent okay so main stage is a sister program to garage band and logic where you can play things live um, it does it is like a professional level program so it does cost a little bit this this is not a function that you can do in garage band but in a lot you know some of you all might have used um some of you all might have used Ableton. Ableton has this function. You could get the cheap one for 99 bucks. But let me switch the camera, my camera, over to my MIDI controller. I'm going to show you that first. So this is my MIDI controller here. This is the first one I bought for my birthday a few years ago. It was 60 bucks on reverb used. So regular old MIDI controller. It's got a bunch of these knobs and pads, and it's got pitch, bend, and modulation. So what I did in main stage is I can tell main stage, when I turn this knob, I want you to turn this up or this down. So you can be the person that tells the computer what to do. So let me share my screen again here. And go. Cool. So I've got this patch um, and this has pads that I can play. This is actually made, this is a preset from like worship tutorials, a big church um, preset kind of thing. But I have access to a piano sound, a road sound, a pad sound, all of this right here at the fader. So when I turn physically, you all can look at my video on the side when i'm turning the knob it turned i assigned it to do this so now it's i can do this road sound i can do this pad sound i can layer in the piano There's other sounds here. There's even um, this arpeggio sound. 
And this little tap tempo button lets me change the tempo that that moves at. So let's go. Er. Let's say I like that and I want to add some piano. And then I've got knobs that can change other things. I'm turning the lows and the highs down. So other things you could do with something like Ableton or Main Stage. This is for somebody that really kind of wants to hop into uh, some advanced functions, whether it's for yourself or whether it's using things live. So something like Main Stage or Ableton Live, um, stuff like that you could trigger a track so people could play along with a track you know maybe if you're doing something with like a band uh, you could do like live looping you might want to get a little midi controller that has like four buttons or something like that so you could like loop you know like ed sheeran does i'm going to actually do a little bit of displaying of looping at the one o'clock so if you want to dive into that uh, either come or watch the recording later later but basically the idea is you could do that's the hard thing and i'm learning this as well you could do basically anything you want it's a computer it's 2022 you can make it do almost anything you want you just normally need the right thing to tell the right message so the right equipment and usually the right cables and really sometimes just a computer that has just enough juice that it doesn't crash every time you do this um i know that all like means like mr Krabs, like dollar signs like start going up as soon as you think that but i think if you buy a couple of quality things uh, and you know try and think about what exactly do i need and what do i want to do so if that's something that you're thinking about that you don't know that you want help with like Andrew and I are more than happy. I know Gabby was on this call earlier. Gabby Banzin is probably more than happy to help all of us techno crew people. We were glad to give away this information. That's why this whole thing is free and stuff like that anyways. So what does anybody have any like questions or things that they want to be able to do that uh, hasn't been displayed or different things like that? Like what do people want to do for the last few minutes here? I think uh, Gab had a question about um, encouraging folks to uh, loop uh, and make their own beats and things like that. Um, talking about using some kind of loops and pre-made stuff in GarageBand. Um, yeah, let me pull yeah. that up. I've got GarageBand on this Mac as well. Uh, you know, just because I'm going to run all the programs. Why not? Uh, but GarageBand came with it. And Great. the good thing about Logic, if you if you do decide, yes, I want to upgrade, Logic looks a lot like GarageBand. It's just like the grown up version of GarageBand. And it um, it um, is the same interface, basically. So you're not learning this totally brand new thing. Uh, share screen, GarageBand. So just real quick. If I wanted to mess around with some loops, Soundtrap and GarageBand are both great for doing like loop type stuff. So in GarageBand, uh, I got to move all this Zoom stuff out of my face. Uh, hold on. So let me full screen it. Yeah. So uh, if I click this little loop de loop, it looks like a Hot Wheels track. That's going to pull up the Apple Loops library. Computer's thinking. It's working too hard right now. It's like 14 things open. Okay, so somebody type in the chat. What genre are we going to do? I'll show the list. Pick something interesting. Hip-hop, easy enough. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's find... Uh, let's listen to this.
Let's just roll with it. All right, let's say we like that, but it's uh, too slow. So let's make the tempo, whoop, not, not 11, uh, one, there we go. So it'll automatically stretch that. And then you can see there's other things here that have the same name. Those are already set up to work really well together. So let's just hear how that sounds. So I just dragged it in there. Uh, and now you see there's two buttons. I can either pull this out or I can use the loop. So this is the same as if you're working for the people that were just in the last presentation. This is the same if you're working in the heartbeat kind of world too. So now we got this bass. Let's hear how this bass sounds when it comes in. Get your subs ready. It says sub bass. Okay, let's say we like that, but now we want a beat. Let's add that in. And let's loop that. say we want to add a riser cool sounds good enough let's add it right there so now here's our whole quick beat One thing we could do with the MIDI controller is we could create a new line and play it in. Uh, we could use it, have one of our knobs on our MIDI controller do something like this, so automation. And change like different effects, but I'm gonna save this because we're gonna talk about this kind of stuff in the next presentation so we'll reference this little track we just made uh, about effects and stuff but is there any uh, other questions we got just a few minutes before the sponsors are going to talk so any questions today i have one so i'm coming to this from like a um i'm an art educator and and um i am the director of a arts organization so i'm just trying to see how right. to integrate music into all the things that we do i'm also a yoga instructor so it's like how does creativity and consciousness collide one of the coolest educational um things that i found recently are these sphero spectrums where you can put these rings on your fingers and there's like a little midi pad um and you can actually like create with colors so kids can mm. Like they're so cool, but I don't understand how to use them. So I have them um, and I don't know how to like connect them to the whole MIDI thing to yeah. make them kind of work. Will you write the name in the chat and yes. uh, we'll, we'll just kind of look into it. I, I'll see what I can do. I've never heard of them, but we'll see if we can figure it out together. They're super cool because I think when you program them, then anything that you touch that is that color will make that sound. Mm. So you can go around to objects and which I think is really good for for kids that are neurodivergent or or you know just have um, like different learning styles to yeah. to kind of like program the world around them. So yeah, synesthetic 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that sounds like probably the only issue is you probably have to program it to do exactly what you want it to do. It's and that's probably the, the barrier. So <laughs> I don't like the computer part of stuff. So like, that's yeah, why I need to that is the part that's like, oh, <laughs> someone can't just install this dishwasher for me. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah, I know. Rebecca, what's up? I was going to say, Kelly, I actually had, um, I actually have used those before and I found it the most helpful to um, do it on the iPad with the app because then you're not having to navigate the like plugging into the computer and then also that way you can be more mobile with the kids too. Um, okay. I also like printed out um, like what would be, you know, a fake xylophone or like little pieces of paper even, and we would stick them places. Um, it's, but I found that the iPad was, you just hook it up with Bluetooth and it's, it's easy, seamless. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There it is. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Sharing stuff. That was great. Uh, thanks, Rebecca. Does anybody else have any other ideas? My computer is trying to crash right now. So I am, I was clicking things in the background. Um, anybody have, oh, that was the other thing we wanted to talk about was like contraindications. So the other side of this coin, we're over here, you know, part of this technic crew that is like, here's all these cool things. Sometimes it's too much. And I saw Grant join here. So Grant is also uh, my dude that talks about all these like, let's think about the other side of things too. So if it feels inappropriate to the environment to be coming in with a bunch of cords, if it's overly stuffy, if you're not feeling confident, like there's so many reasons that it's, it's not like, like maybe capital H harmful all the time, but it can be harmful to the environment if it's like, oh geez uh, and it never works when you want it to work it always throws you know you're that's why you have to get good at troubleshooting because oh i didn't check that preference or in the menu or oh i didn't do that so uh i think part of that is to think of like when am i forcing a you know square peg into a round hole like do i need to do this now? especially the same thing just like the transfer of talking with in brian's like not everybody needs it all the time, but, you know, I think there are lots of situations for especially neurodivergences that uh, I just think creates all these interesting ways that people can make music. And that's like my whole philosophy is like make more music like people, uh, people need that opportunity to do it in the way that makes sense for their brain. Uh, <laughs> 